Am I wrong for ruining my sister-in-law's gender reveal? So I, 31 male, have three beautiful daughters, 7, 5, and 2, which for some reason people in my life think I'm not completely happy with. If I had a dollar for every time I heard, I bet you wish you had a son, or are you ever going to try again for a boy, I'd be a millionaire. Look, if my wife got pregnant again and had a boy, my reaction would be the same as the other three. In my opinion, as long as your child is healthy, who honestly cares? Props to this dad. I never hear guys talk like this. It's so refreshing to hear. The worst and most annoying people towards my wife, give me a son, are my sister-in-law, 29, who has four boys and now pregnant with her fifth child, and my mother-in-law. Last Sunday, we were at my mother-in-law's for Sunday lunch, and my sister-in-law said after dessert to come out to the back garden as they had a balloon to announce the gender of their new baby. Well, long story short, she was having another boy. After everyone congratulated her, she made her way to us and said, I bet you wish just once it would be blue for you guys, then turned to my wife and said, it's never too late to try again. It royally pissed me off because my oldest was in earshot. I turned to her and said, Well, actually, Alice, I wouldn't give one of my daughters dirty socks for what boys were in Europe, and the fact that you base your love on your child's gender says a lot about you as a mother. I don't need a son, so I suggest you take your advice and stick it. She stuttered for a second and then burst into tears, saying I was putting her and her kids down. The mood was ruined, and after that, we left. Since then, my in-law said she deserves an apology, and it's been a long-running joke, so I shouldn't have driven my sister-in-law to tears. Wait, what is it called? You can't take what you... Eat what you dish, can't take what you dish. I can't remember the saying. Am I wrong for calling my best friend dumb for marrying for love? I, 27 female, am in a very stable relationship with my fiance, 29 female. Oh, whoa, double female. Hold up, gotta do it again. I took me, I took me off guard. I, 27 female, am in a very stable relationship with my fiance, 29 female, for around four years, and we are planning on getting engaged eventually and then marrying. My best friend Chrissy, 27 female, has been with her own fiance since they were 20. They only got engaged this year, and it was kind of weird how it took him so long to propose since he seemed to be financially stable enough. All. Throughout the years, I asked Chrissy why her fiancé hadn't proposed yet, and she kept insisting it was not just the right time, but she never said the reason why, just that it wasn't the right time. Eventually, he proposed in the beginning of 2022, and they're planning their wedding for next year. They decided to plan their engagement party during the summertime because due to busy schedules, they couldn't do it earlier. So their engagement party was this past Saturday, and her fiancé made a speech dedicated to her and mentioned pretty much the reasons they didn't get engaged sooner, and I couldn't help but pity my friend. So the reasons were that he didn't have a stable job for the first few years of their relationship and only jumped from position to position, from Walmart to Target, etc. He hadn't finished his degree yet, so he had no higher education. He got his degree in 2019 and only then was he able to get a proper job. He bragged and also thanked Chrissy for never giving up on him and growing with him and how they helped each other form their amazing personalities and achievements and how no matter what the future holds, he'll never forget. Oh, this is sweet. Why are you hating on her? My fiancé and I felt some type of way about it. Why? Some friends of mine and Chrissy agreed how Chrissy basically stayed with a broke man and waited seven years and we don't think that's something praiseworthy but pityworthy. <gasps> that's fucked up. Why would you say that? She was only 20. What? Of course he's broke at 20. As friends, we decided to explain to her our perspective of how we think it was ridiculous that she had to almost reach 30 to move on with her life and that man when someone else could provide what she needed much sooner. Ew, you guys are not nice. Chrissy always said how she wanted marriage and kids, and it's sad that she had to wait this long for this man to get his act together, and she didn't know her worth. She said she loves him, and he's an amazing partner, and wouldn't break up with him over his misfortunes, and what matters that they love each other. Okay, Chrissy's a real one. Why are you guys hating on her? I don't understand. I told her it's dumb how she's marrying for love and not for stability, and how she's basically wasted herself for love, and how the first issue should be raised when he was working at Walmart and Target back to back. You cannot hate on someone working at Walmart and Target. Like, I don't understand. Sure, stability is important. I agree on that. But I think when you hit a certain age, when you're past like your 20, your mid 20s, like 25 and above, and you're dating someone new at that age, that's when financial stability and stuff is important. If you're not doing shit with your life at that point, what were you doing for the past eight years, five, six years? This guy was working his ass off since he was 20. I don't, he got his degree when he was 24, if I'm doing the math correctly. I don't understand the problem. She called us all materialistic in classes and said she doesn't care if she struggles financially as long as she struggles with the right person who will value her emotions and listen to her. She said we are miserable. Oh. She said we are miserable bitches who will find no happiness in life and are very shallow. Could we be the assholes for criticizing her this way? Yeah, you are. Am I wrong for telling my sister I will no longer give her my breast milk? 
I, 28 female, had a stillbirth five weeks ago. My sister gave birth to a healthy baby boy four weeks ago. After my stillbirth, I was producing milk and pumping, and my sister couldn't breastfeed after her son was born. Formula shortage was awful, and I was literally throwing my milk away, so I offered it to my sister, and she gladly accepted it. So I offered it to my sister, and she gladly accepted. I was advised by the doctors to pump for three weeks after the stillbirth to prevent problems for me. I was advised by the doctors to pump for three weeks after the stillbirth to prevent problems for me and then stop. Otherwise, I'd just keep producing milk. Due to the formula shortage, I have been pumping for five weeks now to give the milk to my sister. Now that there is more formula in stock and she has been able to go buy it, I told her I'll stop pumping. She told me her son has stomach problems after the formula and asked me to keep pumping. I told her I emotionally cannot handle it any longer. She said I am being selfish and she already has to feed her son by bottle because she at first suggested I just nurse him for his daily feedings at least. We live next door and I refused. I told her I am sorry and I can pump for a few more days so she can put some in the freezer and have some backup until she finds a better formula for her son but she said breast milk is the healthiest and i should just help her out she called me a selfish asshole and said that i am the embodiment of misery loves company what how can people say this to their own sister my mother feels i should help my own sister out my husband said my sister is way out of line i feel really awful because i could still help her out and i know she needs it oh heck no you did her more than enough by giving five weeks of milk when you were supposed to stop at three and she's uh the entitlement is like blowing my mind if she wants to give her kid breast milk she needs to try harder to feed him like why is she putting that on you do you know how much of a strain it is on your body on your day you have to go about your whole day going around trying to pump because you're producing oh get out of here she needs to take a chill pill am i the asshole for ruining a pregnancy announcement by telling the woman she may have taken the wrong test my husband and I recently invited eight friends for lunch and we were asked if we could also include a new couple, Doug and Sasha. We have never met them before, but everyone who was invited had, so we said sure. At one point during dinner, Sasha needed to use the restroom, and I told her to use the master suite since the other bathroom was occupied. I was helping my husband in the kitchen when Sasha came out of the room bawling and holding something in her hand. At first, I thought she hurt herself, but she said something to Doug that caused him to drop to his knees, cry, and begin kissing her stomach. All of our friends began screaming, jumping, and crying. It was insane. Finally, Sasha tells my husband and I that she is pregnant. Of course, we congratulate both of them, and then I give them a bag to put the pregnancy test in. I will admit, I did find it odd that she brought a pregnancy test and took it at a complete stranger's house, but I didn't say that out loud. Once everyone sat down to eat, Sasha looked over to me and said, I hope you don't mind that I use one of your pregnancy tests. I just saw them and I had to. Looking at her confused, I responded, I don't have any pregnancy tests. Sasha says yes, in your drawer. I asked Sasha if she meant the blue box in the back of my lower left drawer that was closed. She seemed to realize I was pointing out that she basically snooped around and she sheepishly said the box said pregnancy for pregnancy tests. I said, Sasha, the brand is Pregmate and those are ovulation tests. I do not own pregnancy tests. Did you take an ovulation test? Her husband freaked the absolute F out at me and said his wife was not an idiot and can read a box. He insisted Sasha get the test out now and show me that I'm wrong. Sasha refused, saying she didn't need to prove anything to a complete stranger and insisted they leave immediately. One of the couples thought that Doug and Sasha acted completely ridiculous, while the other three couples thought I should have pulled Sasha aside to discuss my concerns and said I was the asshole for saying something in front of everyone. Honestly, the whole situation caught me off guard and everything happened so quickly. The whole thing was bizarre and confusing. I just didn't have the time to put the pieces together mentally before asking about the ovulation tests. Also, I found out later through one of my friends that Sasha did take the ovulation test and she is not pregnant. Am I wrong for paying for another bride's wedding dress, but not my daughter's? My husband and I worked hard and managed to become financially secure adults after both of us grew up in poverty. We raised our children to work hard. We did not spoil them or provide them with a lavish life. As teens, they all had part-time jobs, but we did purchase them their own used cars, which they were required to maintain. We also paid for college and we paid for our oldest two kids' weddings. However, we were merely the ones paying and we did not provide any input or suggestions unless asked. The only thing we didn't pay for their weddings was our son's tuxedo and our oldest daughter's wedding dress. Our youngest daughter, Michaela, is engaged and we are paying for her wedding with the exception of her dress. She must buy her own wedding dress. Michaela invited her dad and I to watch her try on dresses with the bridal party. She found a beautiful dress in her budget and we were so honored to have been allowed to take part in her finding the dress and seeing herself as a bride. Hey, I really like these parents. They sound really dope. While there, I complimented another bride on a dress she was wearing and her mother and I struck up a conversation where I learned that the family was low income and both the bride and groom and the bride's parents had taken out loans to have a beautiful wedding. I... 100% disagree with people who have to take out loans to have weddings. Don't have the wedding. Have a party in your house. Go hurrah, buy a cheap white dress from like Ross or something. But you should never take out loans. That's how the system destroys us because society has brainwashed us into thinking that 
you have to have this lavish lifestyle wedding. Why would you put yourself into debt over one night? Like, why? The bride is also plus sized, and I learned that she had been to six different stores, and there had only been a few options for her size, and all of them had just been awful. The bride ended up falling in love with the last dress she tried on, but was heartbroken to learn that the consultant had misread the price tag, and the dress was actually a thousand dollars over budget. And with alterations to make it her size, it was another fourteen hundred. The bride took the dress off and said she tried to find something online. I grew up poor, and I was also a chubby kid. I was bullied and I was very unhappy. I always wanted more, and in this bride I saw myself, and I didn't want her to have to settle for a dress that fit versus a dress that she loved. So while my daughter was changing, I asked the other bride if I could pay the difference on her dress. It was very emotional. We all held each other and cried. She accepted. See, that's such a nice gesture, though. Like that is really sweet. I very happily paid the difference on her dress. Her mother, herself, and I are now friends on Facebook, and my husband and I have been invited to the wedding, which we will gladly attend. I felt very honored to have been allowed to help this girl in a. Very very small way, but being invited to her wedding was so unexpected and amazing. When Michaela found out about this, she threw a fit and said that I obviously had shown how I truly feel about her wedding and herself, and if I cared at all, I'd have paid for her dress too. She's now not speaking to me or her father, who didn't even have a hand in this, which is unfair. She has now uninvited us from the wedding. We're so hurt and confused. Was I an asshole? Am I wrong for kicking my brother out for announcing his wife's pregnancy right after I announced my daughter had cancer? Just to make sure I represent both sides of the conflict, my brother and his wife suffered from not having kids for years. It impacted them greatly. They love the kids in the family but always wish to have kids of their own. Lately, we got busy with my daughter Megan who is 12 with health problems. She started suffering from anemia, loss of appetite, and recurrent fevers. We've taken her to the